USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. The White House is expected to recommend people in COVID-19 hotspots wear masks. As President Trump said yesterday, regulations concerning masks will be coming soon. The Coronavirus Task Force is warning, though, that masks won't be keeping people necessarily from getting the illness, but rather from transmitting the virus to other people. COVID-19 has now killed nearly 6,000 people across the nation. More than 245,000 confirmed cases are in the U.S. as of last night. The Labor Department reporting more than 6.6 million workers filed first-time claims for jobless benefits last week. That's more than double the 3.3 million that filed the week before. And you're listening to USA Radio News. I'm doing it all. The water, the fiber, the exercise. But I still have constipation with belly pain, straining, and bloating that keeps coming back. My doctor said I may have a chronic medical condition called Irritable Bowel Syndrome with Constipation, or IBSC. Linzess, linaclotide, is a prescription medication that treats adults with IBS with constipation. Linzess helps relieve belly pain and lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movements. Individual results may vary. Do not give to children less than 6, and it should not be given to children 6 to less than 18. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Talk to your doctor and learn more at Linzess.com. That's L-I-N-Z-E-S-S.com. Or call 1-800-LINZESS. More on the coronavirus from a global perspective Experts say it's now killed over 53,000 people around the world, and there are more than a million confirmed infections currently. Weather forecasters are predicting an above-normal hurricane season this year as Colorado State University released its annual Atlantic hurricane season forecast late yesterday, and it predicts 16 named tropical storms instead of the average of 12 And the researchers there say eight of those are going to be reaching hurricane status. The Awakened Church in Jonesboro, Arkansas, says it will defy federal and state guidelines, and it will be holding services this weekend despite the pandemic. That state does not require places of worship to follow the guidelines, urging no gatherings larger than 10 people. And this is USA Radio News. Here's your Georgetown forecast from the HIP Radio Network Weather Center. Daytime highs approaching 74 today. Under cloudy skies with scattered thunderstorms likely. South winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms again tonight. Lows level off around 48. Overcast skies. Scattered thunderstorms likely tomorrow. High temperatures reach up to 57. Cloudy skies expected. That's a look at your forecast. I'm meteorologist Paul Trombley. Currently, it's 66 degrees. Broadcasting worldwide from the Ashby Real Estate Broadcast Studio. This is Hip Radio Network, Georgetown, your hometown station. Five, four, three, two, one. The switch is on. Welcome to Good Morning Georgetown with Robin Ken. Waking you up in the mornings and getting your day started with the hottest hits, news, and jokes. Get ready. And now here's your hosts, Rob Hip and Ken Covington. Morning, Georgetown, Texas. 7.33 a.m. I promise one of these days I'll start right at 7 o'clock. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day to start things here on a Friday. Got my good friend joining us this morning as our Friday co-host, Mr. Lee Ortiz of Climate Control Pros. What's going on, Lee? It's a Friday morning, brother. Dude, your voice is coming through great this morning. We got your headset going. I got to get you on the camera here in a minute, man. What are you up to today, man? Uh, just kind of hanging out with the family doing some projects, uh, just waiting for the phone to ring, get some service calls knocked out. 
Well, I got to give you a public shout out real quick. Lee Ortiz, climate. I just like saying your last name, man. Am I saying it correctly when I roll the R? Yeah. I, yeah, I, that sounds good. See, I, I told, I don't know if you heard the show yesterday, but I was talking, who was on with me yesterday, man? I'm out of it right now. My mind just went blank. Chris Courtney, Courtney Home Inspections, our Thursday co-host. I'm sorry, Chris. Good morning to you. He's watching, by the way. Uh, I, I told him yesterday, I said, my daddy grew up in the Valley. And so my dad was uh, back in the day was like, but he was a like big redneck dude, but he knew how to speak Spanish fluently. And so he taught me how to roll my R's. That's awesome. He said, if you want to speak Spanish correctly, you need to learn how to properly enunciate words. But I don't know that much Spanish, but he told me, he said, when you say it, you got to roll your R's. I want to learn Spanish because I've always had this desire, Lee, to call soccer. I mean, uh, go. <laughs> dude, the, those, the Spanish broadcasters are some of the most amazing guys in the world. And if you ever get a chance, listen to, oh man, who is it? The Carolina Panthers Spanish radio crew. Those guys are amazing. In fact, they have a lot, they have a huge following in Mexico because of the way that they call the football games for Carolina. It's, it's amazing. In fact, Carolina Panthers from my understanding, at least a few years ago, was the most listened to Spanish radio broadcast in the NFL. Wow. Well, those broadcasters, they really get the crowd going, too. They are uh, – that's a talent in itself. I got to give you a shout-out, though. Lee Ortiz here from Climate Control Pros. Got to give you a shout-out. My condenser unit went bad at the house. By the way, don't ever buy a Goodman because it's not that good. <laughs> they say it's a, it's like – I think it was like some dude was like, hey, man, this is a good man. It's good, man. This is how it started. He's like, hey, this is good, man. But it really wasn't. Don't buy it because it's trash. If you have one, I'm sorry. I had one, so I'm talking smack about my own equipment. Mr. Lee Ortiz came by the house, replaced my heat pump. Is that right? Is it the heat pump? Right, it's the heat pump. Replaced the heat pump with a brand new Linux heat pump. And my air in the house has never been colder. So I wanted to give you a shout out, brother. Your guy was in and uh, out of here. I think he was in and out of here in two hours, man, and had that bad boy going. Yeah, Eloy's great. He's one of my best hands, and he can knock things out fast and very proficient at it. Climate Control Pros TX.com. When you need an AC Pro, call your bro at Climate Control Pros. That's Lee Ortiz. Hey, good morning, man. I, I look forward to this every Friday, man. I, I'm. Thankful that you're able to do this, man. And we've got a whole lineup now. I call it the A-team of Georgetown. Not me, but you guys. Uh, I've got five guys now that are helping with co-hosting this show every day of the week. I was talking to Tori Clark last night, and she goes, you need a little estrogen in there on the show every once in a while. And I said, Oh, you got to get Tori involved. Got to get her involved as well. So my yeah. my idea is, is whenever one of you guys can't, you know, I know that maybe you're not going to be able to make it every week or somebody may have something come up. And so when that happens... That's when I'll, uh, you know, I'll give Tori a holler. I'll, she's going to be on. In fact, she'll be on next Friday, by the way, as our as oh, okay. our guest because she renewed her advertising for Spa Lux, and she's awesome. she's going to be on as our guest. We got a great show lined up today, friends. I know we're getting started a little bit late. I want to welcome everybody in that is starting, uh, that is joining us. If you're on the Facebook Live show, feel like uh, saying hello this morning. Would love to hear from you. If you're on the HRN app. We'd love to hear from you as well. We've got a few listeners on that as well. This morning, you can text us at 512-686-2030. Again, that number is 512-686-2030. Lee, did you hear that we, we run that USA Radio news feed? And, you know, I, I'm all – a friend of mine, his dad is is like the superintendent of what's called the United Pentecostal Church International, UPCI. That's the largest, from my understanding, the largest. It's kind of like the Baptists have the Southern Baptists. I grew up as a, in a Baptist church. We had the Southern Baptist, you know, organization. Uh, Methodists, they have theirs, you know, their organization. So a the lot Presbyterians of Presbyterians have theirs. Yeah, and so the so UPCI is kind of is, is the Pentecostal organization for for a lot of Pentecostal churches. Uh, guy that I knew that I, I I used to play basketball with, and some of my best friends grew up in it, and still my best friends to this day grew up in a UPCI church. The superintendent, which is basically the, the the person who oversees the direction of the church for all of the UPCI churches, not just in the U.S., but globally, put out a statement yesterday and, you know, said, hey, it doesn't make us look like cowards. It's it's not it, it doesn't make us look like cowards. It doesn't make it unbiblical that we're deciding not to hold church services. And I, I highly, you know, highly just commend 
this gentleman for for doing that because he's saying, look, we don't need to have church services right now during all this COVID-19. And I agree with that. Did you hear on the USA Radio News feed before we came on, I forget what state that was in, but a church is still wanting to hold services. And it sounded like it was a fairly large church. I think that was in Louisiana. Yeah. I mean, that's just... I, to me, look, I'm not I'm not going to get on this political or especially, you know, religious run this morning, but I just don't think that it's cool. That, that well, I, mean, I, I just don't think it is, man. Well, I think you're putting people in danger that don't need to. And, and you know, Scripture says, you know, where two or more are gathered is you've got faith. I mean, that's all you need is two people and you can be six feet apart. That's it. Yeah. And, you know, it's I like to say choich. When you got two or more choich. people, it's choich. There you, you go. got you got choich. Yeah, so, I don't think that's very smart on their part. I think it's uh, it's putting people at risk that don't need to be, especially is, the elderly. Exactly. What are your thoughts this morning? If you're out there on Facebook Live, what are your thoughts? If you're listening on the HRN app, what are your thoughts on that this morning? Look, I'm not going to sit here and debate. I'm this isn't a this isn't a debate show. I like to just hear everybody's perspective and uh, let us know what your thoughts are on that this morning. I just I commend. Uh, Brother Bernard at the UPCI for for him putting out that statement. I'm just kind of wondering is if it's possible to have church like out in a park where everybody separate with a large microphone. I mean, I don't see where that would be any harm. Yeah, I like what Michael Price said. He said the good Lord also wants people to have common sense. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Common sense is an uncommon thing. Ken, yes. Ken's guitars join us. Ken is our is is the co you know, Ken helped me found this show. Appreciate you, brother. Ken is our co host on Wednesdays. He's gonna be able to chime in every Wednesday and we can do it remotely, so that's gonna work out really great. I'm gonna tell you, man, this whole remote situation, Lee, having for people having to start working from home and communicate from home, I'm gonna tell you what, man. I think that it a lot of positive is gonna come out of this. I really do. Well, I hope so, but I also you have to t- look at the downside to it you learn uh you don't get the interaction with other people so it kind of it's got as good and bad parts to it yeah no it does i think for this you know and and for this show it's going to allow us because i never i've did some things remotely before but i think for this show i know once this all gets back to normal you know we'll have you guys in studio but if you can't make it let's say something comes up we know now that we can do it remotely and that's cool that's going to be a lot of fun like i've been working out of my home studio here in Serenata for the past two weeks now, even though we have our commercial studio up the road in Gerald, I've been remoting in. So what you're hearing right now, this audio that you're hearing right now on Facebook, that audio is from the home studio. But if you're on the HRN app, that audio from my home studio is being relayed, you know, 10 minutes to the north up in Gerald. And that's broadcast actually out of the Gerald out of the Ashby Real Estate Broadcast Studio. So it's cool how all that's set up, man. And uh, it, it took a while to get it all figured out, but I'm thankful for it because it's going to help us going forward. Yeah, that's uh, – I'm just glad you're able to do this and still keep going. Uh, we just want to provide information to the community. I know a lot of people are getting tired of hearing about, you know, the COVID-19, but the, but the reality is there is a lot of people that are very interested, and we want to keep you up to date. The news that you see us publish – we either take it word for word on the press releases. Uh, yesterday, there was a media conference call with Judge Bill Gravel, and we took that audio, posted it on our website. I edited a little bit of it because there was a lot of static and just people saying, uh, blah, that kind of stuff. So I cut it down a little bit. But for the most part, that is the full call. I highly encourage you to go check that out at hrngeorgetown.com. By the way, if you didn't know, I know there's a lot of folks that join us on Facebook every morning, Monday through Friday. But our website, I've been keeping that up to date. I highly encourage you to check out our website at hrngeorgetown.com. Again, it's hrngeorgetown.com. And if you go there today, right now, the first thing that you're going to see on that homepage is Judge Bill Gravel's statement providing the COVID-19 update. A few of those highlights, and I did want to mention this, Lee, a few of those highlights of that call included this. If needed, a corporate organization, they didn't say which one, is providing a 150,000-square-foot facility, which will include 1,500 hospital beds, and this is in Williamson County, for a low-acute care center. If this is needed, though, the county must have approval from the state first. But that's cool to have corporate partners stepping up, donating these resources. 
and it wasn't a it wasn't a, a plug for this corporate partner because he didn't even mention who it was. It's just a corporate business said, "Look, we have a hundred fifty thousand square foot facility. If you guys need a hospital type place, a low a low acute care center, we'll provide that." I think that's amazing. That talks about the power and the resilience of this community, not just in Georgetown, but all over Williamson County, Lee. Yeah, that's uh, – I actually lost your feed for a second. I got it back, so I missed half of what you said. Sorry about that. No, it was a, it was a, a corporate organization providing 150,000-square-foot facility if needed for the COVID-19 oh, wow. pandemic, and, and they're going to provide – fifty. it'll have enough room for 1,500 hospital beds. That's awesome. But the thing is, it's got to be approved by the state first. And that's only if we need it. We don't need it right now. We were talking before we went on about the situation in New York, man. It has gotten pretty bleak down there or up there. It has. And I think that's kind of the disconnect that people are seeing. It's like here, it's not so bad, but there, I mean, it is full on pandemic. So it's kind of hard to wrap your head around what they're actually dealing with. And rightfully so that several states have stepped up and said, you know, we'd rather not uh, have anybody coming in. I mean, you got to mitigate this thing. You got to you got to cut it off. And unfortunately, it's where we're at now. And hopefully things will, you know, we want things to get better sooner than later. But unfortunately, a lot of professionals and this isn't the media, the media, this is you know, people who are professionals. These are medical professionals. These are people who know ninety nine point nine percent more than what we know about this stuff. Sure. They're saying well, that we're just getting started. I've got a sister and my brother-in-law. They live in uh, in Boston, and they had planned on coming down here uh, just to kind of ride this whole thing out. And they actually were told no because they have they would have had to travel through New York, and so they're staying in place now. Yeah, and there's a lot of folks who have to stay where they're at. My dad's in a nursing home up in Belton, and I've been able to talk to him. He doesn't have an iPhone, so we do it through the Android, through the the Google Call app, which is awesome. I told him, I said, Dad, you look like Santa Claus, man. His beard is down to here. He could be part of the Georgetown Beard Club. And nice. his beard is white. And I said, Dad, you're, I've never seen you with a white beard like that. Um, but his spirits are good, and, and he's I love him, and I just, you know, I, I hope all this will clear up, like I said, so we can go down there and see him. But I don't, I don't want to see him right now. And thank goodness for technology to be able to at least see him that way. Misty, yeah, we've uh, our my mother in law's in a home, and all we can do is just talk to her. We haven't been able to see her in the last well since all this started. Misty uh, putting a message on here on Facebook saying it gets really boring at home twenty four seven with a three year old and a five month old. I figure that keep <laughs> Misty. I figure that keep you going over there. Thank you for joining us by the way oh this morning, gosh. Misty. Good morning to you. Well, as we continue here, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that call yesterday. A call. This is really cool. I think there was some confusion on the way that I worded this, but I just worded it basically the way that I heard it. A call center has been set up to take inbound calls from resident needs in Williamson County. We already knew about that. In addition, and now it was day before yesterday. So what was day before Wednesday? So in addition, Wednesday at 8.30 a.m., the county call center began calling veterans to identify any needs that they may have. Judge Gravel stated the call center and the county will be calling every veteran in Williamson County. I think that is fantastic. Judge Gravel has always had a, such a high focus on our veterans in this community. And a lot of those, there may be a lot of them that don't have anybody. And is he a veteran himself? I'm not sure about that, to be honest. Hmm. But he is making it a priority. And somebody said, well, that's kind of weird. That's number three on the list. I said, well, it's not. I just wrote these bullet points down. I said, if you want to go hear the full call, go play it. You know, it's yeah. it, this isn't in the order of importance. But I think it's extremely important. And I commend him. And I commend our county for taking that step and that leadership. And I think that it's important that we reach out to our I veterans. I mean, have, some of these guys are still dealing with a lot from being overseas. And, I mean, you got to check in on them. So that is that is what the county's trying to do. They Judge Gravel said, "Look, we're trying to call every veteran in Williamson County." I I think that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Here's something else too that he challenged everyone, and this is just you know a little bit of patri- patriotism here. He's challenged everyone: if you are physically able to do so and have one, raise your American flag in the morning, and respectfully take it down at sunset every day during this pandemic. I don't see a problem with that. I understand that there's. There's bigger needs than us putting up a flag and taking it down, but I think it's at the heart of it, it's showing the American patriotism and showing that we're not going to give up, that we're going to continue to fight. I don't see a problem with that either. So I think that's really cool. Mm-hmm. Somebody complained about that, saying, I think that that's the, the number three on the list of importance. I don't think that's that important. I said, well, get over it. 
Just get over it. There's always going to be people out there who are just going to find negative in everything, man, and that's sad for them. All court hearings in the county at the moment are virtual, so any court proceeding, that's all taking place virtually right now. He encouraged everyone to continue practice social distancing, saying, look, this isn't just an option, it's a requirement. The older age bracket is at the highest risk and the most vulnerable. We know that. The, the biggest news that we received from that, and I think there's going to be another update maybe today or next week, Williamson County is only in possession, as of that call yesterday, 113 COVID-19 tests. Now, I asked in that call, it was a media conference call, I asked the judge a, a specific question about that. I said, how many tests do we have? And that was the response. So I'm glad that I asked him that question. There, The Abbott Labs and a few others have also put together rapid tests as well, Lee. These 15, uh, they say that you can get a result in five minutes. The problem is, I didn't know this, that they're not FDA approved, at least at this time. How accurate are they? And that, See, and that's a good point, because I asked Judge Gravel, I said, what about the rapid test? Does Williamson County have any of those? His response was that the rapid tests are not being used at this time, as they are not proven. And yeah. as what he said, they may not, they may not be FDA or what's called FDA emergency approved. <laughs> So, again, you know, if you don't have something that's proven, why use it and waste resources and time and then get somebody's hopes up when they really may have been sick? I think that that's good. Someone asked a question nearly one th- uh, about the cases, saying nearly one-third of the cases in the county have already recovered. They're asking what attributed to that. Another media representative asked that question. Judge Gravel attributed the stay-home, stay-safe orders and the social distancing as helping to reduce the number of confirmed cases. He was talking about the population of Williamson County and said, look, considering the the population of our county, he said things in Williamson County are actually pretty good right now. When you compare that side to side with counties of similar size to Williamson County. Uh, Someone also had asked, you know, as far as is how long this coronavirus is going to take to run its course. The judge said, based upon numbers provided to the county, some of that was from UT Research and some other organizations, Judge Gravel stated, quote, unquote, we have only begun this process. And, I mean, and, and they still don't know if it's going to die off in the summer. Nobody knows. And that's kind of where we're at right now. So those are the updates. Again, go to hrngeorgetown.com. Again, it's hrngeorgetown.com, and you can easily read that article. I don't like coughing, man. You know, when you cough, Lee, you get judged right now. Uh, yeah, but you're all alone in there. You're okay. <laughs> go to go to hrngeorgetown.com. Read the article. I posted it on Facebook, by the way, too, to take you directly to it. And uh, and, and we want to know that. Hey, good morning to Carolyn Martin. I, I had a chance to chat with her a little while back, and she was, I love you, Carolyn. I'm glad that you were doing okay. She has Georgetown Antique Mall down on the square, and I know that things have been tough for her business, uh, Just and as many folks. Carol, I'm not calling you out. I'm just saying because we love you and we care about you and your husband and, and all the great things that you've done over the years in our community here in Georgetown. I, I had a chance to chat with her and and uh, just really have always always appreciated Carolyn. You know, even after I sold Click, I used to do her IT work, Lee, and, and she's one of those customers that I had back in the day that – from time to time, I'll pop in her in her antique store and just ask how she's doing. I don't have anything to sell, Carolyn. I just want to come by and say hello to you. And I think it's important that we we keep those relationships and we keep thinking about people who who have always made an impact on us. And she was saying that she is going to fly her flag. That is awesome. So that, that is, is awesome. that's cool, Carolyn. And she's on the square, correct? She is. Yeah, she's on the she's on the square. Well, there's a lot of businesses on the square that are shut down, which is you know it's sad. She was asking. She was asking a question. What area of Williamson County are the people who are affected? Well, the latest numbers have shown that the majority of that is in Round Rock. Now we had uh, nine or ten cases here in Georgetown of confirmed cases. Now again, those numbers may be really low because we don't have a lot of the tests. As we said earlier, there's only 113 tests in the entire county that we're aware of, and so that's been a situation right now. Where would you even go to get those tests? Who's offering up? Is it uh, one specific hospital or is it scattered throughout? Do you know? I think it's scattered throughout. I don't want to miss information there. I know when we had Dr. Wynn on, he was talking that they only had a couple of them. Yeah, and, I think I remember him saying that. Yeah, and they want, to, they want to be very cautious that, look, if you've got mild symptoms, of course, you need to seek medical care regardless, but they're not going to sit here and, and, and use resources unless they absolutely have to right now. And so that's kind of kind of where we're at on everything, Lee. What I'm kind of wondering is, though, is lately you've been hearing, you know, 
deaths attributed to coronavirus, but nobody really knows. They're not really testing. So it's almost like they're calling everybody who dies right now is coronavirus related. But I have a feeling those numbers are skewed I mean, because some people, unfortunately, are have underlying issues and they do pass away. Uh, but just to willy nilly call it all coronavirus, I think it's irresponsible. Yeah, you can't do that. And you don't want to spread fear. And the media has been doing a good job at inflating yes. a lot of things. And I've always told folks, I they said, really look, have. we're just going to give you the numbers. We're going to give you the information that's given to us. We're not going to spin it. We're not going to twist it. We want to be boring like C-SPAN with our information. <laughs> C-SPAN is so great because they just put a camera on and they turn it on and no, and they just let people say what they're going to say. There's no It's kind of like watching ice melt. Yeah, that's what we're going to do here on H. Isn't that exciting, friends? If you want the news here on HRN, what Lee said, it's just melting the ice. And how yeah. many know that that ice is really going to be melting here in the next month or two with the heat coming <laughs> up, man? Speaking of that, Lee, you've got a product now at Climate Control Pros that's pretty incredible, One, and it's it's also had a recommendation, I believe, by the CDC. Can you talk to us about that and maybe show it to us? And it's in the yeah, air conditioning industry. Yeah, it's called the iWave R. So this is kind of what it looks like, the box. The uh, You can see it. What it is, it gets installed in your HVAC system, and it cleans the air as it passes through the system. And so it's uh, the CDC actually came out and I can post I can have the uh, uh, the memo that was posted on it, that it is one of the only products out there right now that can kill the coronavirus uh, if it's airborne. So it's a pretty neat product. Unfortunately, it is expensive. Uh, But this one right here that I just showed you is going in my house. That's awesome. And how does it get installed? I mean, I'm going to post a link here on on face. I found something. Lee. It was a PDF file. This was from mastermechanical.net forward slash files forward slash I wave capital R dot PDF. So if you're listening again, it's mastermechanical.net forward slash files forward slash I wave W A V E capital R dot PDF. I just posted that there uh, for folks to read about it. The manufacturer of this is called new Calgon, which is, they have some amazing products uh, out there. They have all kinds of, uh, cleaning solutions that we use in our industry, uh, you name it, they can, they develop it. And it's all, uh, all revolves around uh, taking care of your system and uh, making sure it's clean. So it's a neat product. Uh, there's another one out there. It's called the, uh, the bl- it's kind of a blue light. It's an UV light that will also help uh, anything that's in the airs. Uh, those have been around for a long time and those are still, uh, anything will help at this point. I was going to ask you about those UV lights. You know, that was a, a yes, technology. Absolutely. I heard about that technology, I guess, 10 years ago or so. A, a gentleman that yeah, I used to do it's IT It's only gotten for. better. And how does that work? It just passes the particles through as, it, as, the, as, the, as the, what do they, what do they call that unit? The, uh, the handler as it sucks in air? air handler. So yeah, as so what it goes, it gets installed uh, into the air handler. And what it is, is imagine this. Imagine just the sunlight inside your unit the whole time killing off anything that's coming through it. So... That's basically what it is. It's UV light. So that's, that's pretty cool, man. It is cool. It's come pretty neat technology. Uh, actually, the poker room uh, will be getting both this this product here and the UV light as well. Because, uh, you know, when this thing all goes away, we want to put people at ease, you know, let them know that we're doing everything we can to uh, maintain a clean and healthy environment. Lee, you just mentioned in, in, in more information they can find out about you at Climate Control pros tx.com that's climate control pro what can folks do right i mean what are your needs right now lee with with your business man if you don't mind just being honest and letting folks know and then maybe some of the specials that you have going on at climate control pros well i mean obviously this is a special that we're putting on and then uh with the uv lights but for me personally uh anybody who needs it uh if you have your ac system that's down it's not working please give me a call i mean there's no sense for anybody to suffer in the heat i mean it's bad enough that we're all stuck at home might as well be comfortable and i've got access to all kinds of equipment so we can we'll get you going if we have to and parts i mean i'm one for always running it till it dies so if we can fix it we'll fix it for you well you guys like i said your guy came out eloy he fixed mine took care of me and uh Bridget's happy and how many know, even though we're not married pretty much, I mean, it's happy wife, happy life. And so you got to take care of the ladies and Lee, you, uh, you directly help take care of our relationship. So thank you. Good. Appreciate it, man.
We're talking to Lee Ortiz this morning. Coming up at the 8 a.m. hour, we're going to have our good friend Derek Zorneman of the Austin Disaster Relief Network talking a little bit about their efforts and what they've been doing. Uh, I've known Derek a very long time. He used to be involved heavily with outreach at Celebration Church and just a man that has a heart to serve others, and he has always been utilizing that talent of serving others and helping throughout disasters, just basically whatever people have needed. Derek has always been there to help out, and so I'm excited to have him on this morning coming up here in just a little bit as uh, we continue here, though, this morning with Lee Ortiz of Climate Control Pros. Got a great show lined up. Lee, you're our host, of course, every Friday, man, and we're able to do it remotely, and and uh, we're always going to have a lot of fun here. Yeah, I need to get me a green screen like you so we can put pictures up behind me. Yeah, that'll be that'll be pretty sweet, man. You know, we'll keep things going. We, and we had a pretty good week here uh, back on, I forget what day it was, March the 31st. What day was the 31st? That was Tuesday. Wednesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. yeah. Tuesday had Andrew Monaco on our show, the voice of the Texas A&M Aggies. I, that brings up a point real quick, Lee, because you're an Aggie. Did you were you able to were you able to listen to that show? Were you able to listen to any of that? No, I wasn't. Unfortunately, I wanted to. Um, obviously, yeah, because my son's an Aggie. I mean, he's he goes to Texas A&M. So, so absolutely, I would have loved to have heard that show. Well, the good news is everything now is archived. All of our morning shows are archived. I put them. They're always on Facebook. Of course, you can go back and listen to Good Morning Georgetown here on Facebook on our Good Morning Georgetown page, on the Hip Radio Network page, on my personal page. I, I put it everywhere. Here's something really cool, though, is we've recently started taking the audio from all of these morning shows and put it into a podcast format. And so if you've got most, you know, a lot of folks have uh, have an iPhone. The cool thing is you go to your iPhone, you go to iTunes, you just search for Good Morning Georgetown. There'll be a podcast of every show that we do from now on. It goes back about two weeks almost. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, and it, it gets distributed to multiple platforms. So if you're on Spotify, you search for that as well, and you can you can look at it there too. So you can go back and listen to that interview with Andrew. Man, he provided not just his knowledge in the industry and, and how he became the voice of the Aggies. Dave South retired, and, and uh, Dave was there, my goodness, I want to say 50 years, just an outstanding Christian man who, who had really helped out a lot with Texas A&M and calling their sports for so long. Andrew got that call in 2018. And he's been the voice of the Aggies. This though is is this was kind of really a bummer though because Dave was going to go ahead and call Aggie baseball one more year, and this was the final year that he was going to call Aggie baseball. And uh, unfortunately, all that got canceled, and so uh, Dave did not get uh, get a chance to finish out Aggie baseball the way that he had wanted. But nonetheless, f- fifty wonderful years at Texas A and M. Yeah, University. I mean, uh, I've been to a Texas A and M football game this past season, uh, their last home game, and that stadium was electric. I mean, it was so much fun. I wanted to tell you, Lee, I've been seeing a lot. Of, see, man, I'm not a hater. I've just never been a huge look. There are going to be people dropping off this stream when I say it. I've never been a big UT fan. Okay, that doesn't mean I. You know, it's a, if there's certain teams they're playing, I'll be okay with them. But I've, I've always, I guess growing up in a Baptist church, I was just naturally a big Baylor fan. Even when we were horrible, played at Floyd Casey Stadium, you couldn't even give away tickets back then. Literally, you couldn't. And just the program that was built there, you know, unfortunate circumstances, of course, that happened over there. But the program that, that just really grew so fast in a Big 12, I've always been a Baylor fan. And I was super excited when things started rocking and rolling. I was excited this year for the basketball program. John Morris is the voice of the Baylor Bears. Got to know him a little bit more over this past year and the great work that he does. In fact, he was named, uh, I believe, uh, right there as one of the Texas sportscasters of the year this year. They have a pretty decent baseball program, too. Great of baseball program. Yeah. Uh, in fact, my son, my middle son, is uh, is a big ball player, big pitcher. Of course, he wants to either pitch for LSU or Texas A&M, one of the two. Well, here, here's the thing. Joshua Harris is joining us at the Oak Ridge Disciple House. He is our co-host on Tuesdays. Appreciate Oak Ridge and all of their support. By the way, our Zoom is now sponsored by Roberts Printing, so we don't have to worry about the 45-minute uh, delay anymore. Thank you to John Montgomery and Roberts Printing. Oh, yeah. for uh, And he just popped on, right, when I said, John, I wasn't saying that just because you popped on, uh, but Roberts Printing sponsoring our Zoom conferences now, and, and now I don't have to worry about that 45-minute time out because man that happened to, when i was with andrew monaco that thing timed out and i was embarrassed i was like you got to be kidding me i had to rush our interview because it was timing out this is what i'm getting at though it takes me a long time to get to a point and here it is i've been seeing a lot of that usc ut championship game on tv 
I've been seeing people posting about it, reliving the Longhorns' glory moment. I'm going to tell you what, though. To, the, to this day, Lee, I still, I still get a little flustered about it because Vince Young's knee was down. He did not get that first down. And if that changed the course of the game, and if there was a replay back then, USC may have won that national championship, Lee. That's going to get a lot of people uh, flustered this morning. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love you guys. Hey, we're going to step aside and take a break. Time now, 8.04 a.m. here on KHGTDB. It's Hip Radio Network. Good morning, Georgetown, your hometown station. When we come back, we'll get Derek Zornerman here. Stay with us, friends. We'll continue in just a few moments. We'll be right back after the break. USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. The White House is expected to recommend people in COVID-19 hotspots wear masks. As President Trump said yesterday, regulations concerning masks will be coming soon. The Coronavirus Task Force is warning, though, that masks won't be keeping people necessarily from getting the illness, but rather from transmitting the virus to other people. COVID-19 has now killed nearly 6,000 people across the nation. More than 245,000 confirmed cases are in the U.S. as of last night. The Labor Department reporting more than 6.6 million workers filed first-time claims for jobless benefits last week. That's more than double the 3.3 million that filed the week before. And you're listening to USA Radio News. I'm doing it all, the water, the fiber, the exercise, but I still have constipation with belly pain, straining, and bloating that keeps coming back. My doctor said I may have a chronic medical condition called irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. Linzess, linaclotide, is a prescription medication that treats adults with IBS with constipation. Linzess helps relieve belly pain and lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movements. Individual results may vary. Do not give to children less than 6, and it should not be given to children 6 to less than 18. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Talk to your doctor and learn more at linzess.com. That's L-I-N-Z-E-S-S dot com. Or call 1-800-LINZESS. More on the coronavirus from a global perspective. Experts say it's now killed over 53,000 people around the world, and there are more than a million confirmed infections currently. Weather forecasters are predicting an above-normal hurricane season this year as Colorado State University released its annual Atlantic hurricane season forecast late yesterday, and it predicts 16 named tropical storms instead of the average of 12 and the researchers there say eight of those are going to be reaching hurricane status. The Awakened Church in Jonesboro, Arkansas, says it will defy federal and state guidelines, and it will be holding services this weekend despite the pandemic. That state does not require places of worship to follow the guidelines, urging no gatherings larger than 10 people. And this is USA Radio News. Here's your Georgetown forecast from the HIP Radio Network Weather Center. Daytime highs approaching 74 today. Under cloudy skies with scattered thunderstorms likely. South winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Chance for scattered thunderstorms again tonight. Lows level off around 48. Overcast skies. Scattered thunderstorms likely tomorrow. High temperatures reach up to 57. Cloudy skies expected. That's a look at your forecast. I'm meteorologist Paul Trombley. Currently, it's 66 degrees. Five, four, three, two, one. The switch is on. Welcome to Good Morning Georgetown with Rob and Ken. Waking you up in the mornings and getting your day started with the hottest hits, news, and jokes. Get ready. 
And now, here's your host, Rob Hip and Ken Covington. Good morning and welcome back. Time now, 8.08 a.m. on what will end up being a rainy day. In fact, this starts a trend of rain. If you go pull up your phone and look at the weather forecast, it is going to be raining. My goodness, I was looking at it earlier. There is not a sunshine icon anywhere on that forecast, at least over the next five days, maybe the next seven days. Welcome back, friends. Hip Radio Network, Georgetown here for Good Morning Georgetown. I'm Rob Hip, your host, joined by Lee Ortiz, our co-host, as always on Fridays. But now, my honor and privilege to bring on a good friend, someone I've known a very long time, a man that's had a heart for others, and he's always doing great work in the community and in the church environment and just helping out so many folks Mr. Derek Zwerneman, thanks for joining us, Derek. Good to hear from you this morning. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. How do I sound to you? You sound wonderful as always, my friend, and uh, just excited to have you on. <clears throat> What's been going on in your world, man? Woo, well, it, it's been a little bit busy. I've been working with uh, several different organizations through um, the network that I, that I serve as a church development manager with Austin Disaster Relief Network. And it's, it's been full on. I got to say, whenever I, I took this position about a year ago, stepping out of my position in the church, um, I didn't I didn't realize that it would be this much in times of disaster. But you know what happens is you just get this heightened sense of, of uh, anticipation and, and you just dive in and do what you feel called to do. So it's it's been busy, Rob. Well, you've been doing great work, man. Hey, before we dig into everything, I got a special announcement today, and I just wanted to toss this by you here in just a minute. Stand by. We got a special announcement for our guest here on the show. It's not your traditional birthday, Derek. It's the Hip Radio Network Good Morning Georgetown version. Happy birthday to you, my friend. Happy birthday to you, my friend. Yeah, come on now. Happy birthday to you. I hope you have a great day. Happy birthday, the good morning Georgetown way, baby. Hey, happy birthday, man. I do I do it was your birthday today. Your wife had messaged me and said, she said, you know, it's it's Derek's birthday today. And I said, I, I didn't want to just play the regular old corny happy birthday. I wanted to give you a special, a special good morning, Georgetown. So happy birthday to you, man. That's awesome. Thank you so much. You know, I walked in the door this morning. I came off duty at the fire department, walked in the door at seven o'clock this morning, and there's a big poster on the door. The counter's covered with balloons and a big happy 46th birthday. And uh, I don't know how I feel about that, honestly. 40, Derek, you know, when I first met you, this is a true story, and we're going to get into to the great work that you're doing here with the Austin Disaster Relief Network in just a moment and, and, and the rest of the things that you're doing, not just there in Trap, but all over in Williamson County as well. When I first met you, though, man, I remember it was at a Celebration Church youth event, and you were dressed up, and it was like 70s disco night, and you were decked out in some <laughs> 70s gear. And I thought, man, who is this high school senior kid that's so popular in here? Cause you were like the popular kid, but it turns out you weren't a kid at all, man. You were you were already like thirty, I think. <laughs> yeah, you can dig that picture up on my Facebook if you go far enough back. <laughs> and there's, pro- I think there's a picture of you with me, Rob. It may have been, man. So, well, Derek, so, but it's yeah. Well, appreciate you being on the on the show this morning. Our friend Joshua Harris, uh, he was sending you a message saying Derek is the man who helped us get our needs met to open the Conroe <laughs> Disciple House eight years ago. He wanted to give you a Come shout on. out this morning, man. Man, love that guy. Doing a great work. He's always been doing a great work. Well, Derek, talk about what's been going on. I know that you've been extremely busy, man. Um, you know, bef- kind of leading into that, talk a little bit about just your family and how you guys got here to this area. You've been here a long time. And then, of course, working with the fire department. Do you mind letting us know a little bit about that leading into the story today? Yeah, um, I was born here at St. David's. I'm, I'm one of the originals. And so um, just grew up. My dad was a Austin firefighter. He retired uh, several years ago, but he was a battalion chief with the city. And I figured that's what I would always do. I ended up stepping into that in 1997. And so I'm working on my 23rd year with the Austin Fire Department. Um, about 10 years ago, I injured my foot really bad. And What I thought was going to be the worst day of my life ended up sending me on a whole new uh, trajectory of life. And with my family, I do have uh, an awesome wife, April, 
love you. Thank you for the balloons. And uh, Jackson, who is 19, almost 20. London, who's uh, right at 18 this month. And then Liberty, who's 12. And so it's it's been a unique ride. But um, I now, with the fire department, I, I went down about 10 years ago. I went to uh, communication. So I work in dispatch at the fire department. I work a day on, a couple days off. And then on my days off, I've always uh, served in the church. And uh, just recently, like I said, last year, I took the position with Austin Disaster Relief Network as church development manager. So it's it's been a pretty neat ride. And all my worlds uh, get to collide. I, I go back and uh, look at old pictures and, and kind of reminisce. And uh, it's it's amazing what God's been able to do through this, uh, you know, simple yes to what he had uh, asked me to do years ago. So it's it's pretty unique to be in this position and where I am today. Uh, I get to meet with hundreds of pastors. I'm on a national team with our association related churches for disaster preparedness. And um, what happens in Texas changes the world. And we're seeing that everywhere. So uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Well, Derek, we're talking to Derek we're in this morning here with the Austin Disaster Relief Network, not just a DRN, but wanted to ask you as well. You're serving as the, li- the liaison now for Central Texas Food Bank between offsite assembly locations, three of those. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you guys are doing right now? Yeah, so uh, right at the beginning of uh, COVID-19, when this was all starting to, to stir up, um, I was asked to go into a meeting. A good friend of mine who I met uh uh, I guess it was in 2018, we were both praying at the governor's prayer breakfast. I was praying over the uh, first responders and military, and he was, I believe he was business leaders or our community, uh, but his name is, he probably wouldn't want me to say, but Pete Inman's an amazing connector. And Pete came up to me and said, Derek, um, I have a good friend that told me I need to meet you, and so we need to be friends. And ever since then, we've just been on a path of of connecting with people. And, and I get a call from Pete, who is a board member at the Central Texas Food Bank. And he said, hey, I need you to go tour the place. They're looking for some help to uh, organize some offsite locations. And I, I really believe that the church can handle this. What do you think? And I said, absolutely. And so I went down for a meeting. Um, I believe it was on the 16th, 15th or 16th, with uh, Derek Chubbs, who's the CEO down at the food bank, along with his team. And uh, we had a couple of special guests there as well to uh, include Commissioner Trevelyan, Jeff Trevelyan of Precinct One in Austin, and then uh, Rudy um, Mateer, who's a council member of Pflugerville, and also Larry Wallace, who's a a mayor in Maynard. So these guys have the heart to help people, and I got to had the privilege of meeting them on this day as we toured uh, the Central Texas Food Bank. We also brought uh, uh, team members to include uh, Pastor Mel Stauber, from Celebration Church, and then uh, Chris Landry, and uh, another representative from Austin Christian Fellowship, just come check it out and see what uh, what they thought as far as moving forward with doing some offsite locations. So it was from that meeting that um, we just started talking and said, "Hey, I think we can do this." And um, I was asked to be the liaison and uh, the planner for the offsite location. So uh, it's it's pretty incredible what's happened since. We have uh, Celebration Church is active right now. We have uh, Austin Christian Fellowship. And then also the incredible Greater Nation, which is Greater Mount Zion. And uh, Greater Mount Zion came on uh, shortly after. I think they started on the 24th. But uh, what an offsite assembly does, It's if, if you put it in the fire department terms, it's an inline pump. We're putting an engine in between the, the hydrant and the end result where we need a, where we need to put out some boxes of food. So... Um, this thin line pump has been uh, doing about, I, I want to say it's about 12,000 boxes a week wow. and that's about 840 a day. So that's a truck load at each one of these locations. And, uh, the, the cool part about it is that the church is rising up. The church gets to be the, the, the hero in this and really, um, uh, what I, I love to say, and it's one of the, the goals and purpose of, of what we do in disaster uh, preparedness, it's it's to demonstrate and declare the love of Christ through the local church. So um, it's incredible to see. Um, recently, we have, uh, we have Life Austin, who has been trained, and they're ready to go on board. Uh, Pastor uh, Brian Larson out there has taken uh, the, uh, the reins of, of the campus out in West Austin, out the Wyanoke Hill. Uh, so Life Austin 
We have Shoreline, who is also trained and ready. Um, and then uh, Life Church Leander, Victory Church, and Hill Country Bible Church are all in the process of saying, yes, we want to do this. And so uh, my job right now, as far as the liaison and planning, is to have those backup locations because uh, they may need more food uh, ready to go, you know, and uh, and then they may also, if, if there was an exposure at one of these locations, we'd have to mm. immediately switch over to a different location. So it's been a really amazing process. We've learned a whole lot through it, written the manual. There's a 25-page guideline that uh, churches take, and then we have a process for walking them through. Uh, some good friends of mine that you probably know, uh, James Davis, uh, which is, uh, he's an engineer, but he also is the uh, one of the founding directors of uh, Kita Free, uh, which is a, a sex trafficking awareness, and, and they also have some safe houses and some training that they do for uh, for the sex trafficking industry and fighting that battle. And then also Thelini Kate, who's just an amazing woman of God, who's always come alongside to help. She's uh She's a scholar, and those two, anytime that I, I call them in, they come in and make me uh, act like I know what I'm doing. <laughs> so <laughs> i got to give them credit. Well, we're continuing to talk to Derek Zorneman here with the Austin Disaster Relief Network and helping out with so many other organizations. The Food Bank, you know, I've heard a lot about them. I, I, I've never really had to... I've never been around anybody that utilized their services, but I know that there's a huge demand out there. Derek, you talked about, if you can give those numbers again, you talked about how much food is going out right now daily and, and how much of an increase has that been now due to the coronavirus and, and how is that really helping to benefit folks? Cause they're they're They need food and you guys are definitely taking care of them in that sense. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I've realized that this is such a fluid time. And so things are changing uh, over and over again. But when we first came in to tour, uh, Derek was uh, the the president over at the Central Texas Food Bank was explaining how, you know, we already take care of 25,000 every month, you know, and uh, that's our normal customer base. And so we're seeing a spike and in an incline. This was on the 16th, I believe. And uh, that spike has has just continued every day to be more and more people that need help. And the Central Texas Food Bank, what what this location does over on Metropolis is they actually um prepare the boxes set up all the logistics to support all of the local food banks so if you're wondering hey how do i get a box of food we're really uh, in a challenging time right now if you go to centraltexasfoodbank.org you can uh, you can click on find food and there's a map it breaks down all the central texas food bank locations and that's where you'd want to start Okay, so don't call the Central Texas Food Bank phone number on their website and say, I need a box of food. You need to go to your local food bank because uh, the distribution process and everything that we're actually doing through these off-site locations are supporting those local food banks. So as we think about the, uh, the location for uh, a new site, they're actually looking at, hey, how can a truck get in there, pull out, and then drop off in a local food bank? So that's how that works. Number wise, uh, we're we're pumping out about I'd say about twelve thousand boxes a week through these three locations. There's another one that just opened in South that I haven't had a whole lot of uh, connection with, but it's a uh, there's a, a church that's way south that's also supporting. So uh, you can figure about uh, I'm going to say about fifteen thousand to twenty thousand boxes a week wow. that the church is helping. Uh, the food bank does about a thousand a day, so they're at about five thousand. So just think about that. We're we're really helping to support uh, those efforts and, and just kicking that number way up. Well, of course, all of us here in this area and, and around appreciate all the, the hard work that you're doing and all of those at the Central Texas Food Bank. We appreciate that and just taking care of folks. Derek, as we kind of shift gears a little bit here now, talking a little more closer to home here in Williamson County, uh, you had talked to me about working with the planning team through Judge Gravel's office, developing a plan to help find needs and, and meeting needs. Can you talk a little bit more about that and just the impact here in Williamson County that you guys are doing? Because it's not just the food bank. You're working on multiple things at once, Derek. Absolutely. So um, I was asked to come in, uh, actually was contacted by our, our pastor, uh, my pastor, Joe Champion of Celebration Church, and uh, they were looking uh, to help. Uh, Judge Gravel come up with a list of pastors in Williamson County, and, and we just happened to have that at Elsa Disaster Relief Network. That's what we do. So um, I was able to share with uh, with the judge a list of pastors that made the initial uh, communication request to join him on a, a telephone call. That's what I really love about our judge is that he values 
the faith-based uh, community. And he really values the pastors and the leaders that are leading in this community and uh, throughout Williamson County. Um, so just hearing his transparency on these phone calls is, uh, is incredible. And he trusts in God to provide, but he also, um, he brings the reality that, hey, there's some things happen that we just can't, uh, we, we just can't grab a hold of and, uh, and I can't make the call on from his perspective. And so even the, the idea of shutting down churches, you know, doing live stream instead of having people come to the church, like that was a hard thing. And I know it was, um, but he's been incredible uh, with uh, sharing the information, the most up to date with, with the pastors before it even goes out to the community. So um, I've, I've got to give him kudos and say thank you as our judge to uh, continue doing that because it's so important. You have so many pastors that are, are behind you and, and really uh, appreciate that type of communication. Now, um, as far as your question, uh, the Wilco co-ad was developed through this first communication. So uh, what we what we did is uh, city, our uh, county leaders and uh, myself, our ADRN, and, um, and then some of the leadership from uh, Celebration and some of the other churches uh, decided that, hey, we need some type of uh, organization that, that can be supporting what's happening in this county and so we realize that there's there's needs that need to be met and there's people that can meet needs and so we look at local churches local nonprofits, um, businesses that are doing work and supporting you know yesterday you had the uh the bearded guys i had some notes here but i lost them uh you had the guys from the <laughs> georgetown the beard, beard club yeah beard club right yep. and what did they say man they i love it they said we just see a need and we fill it and so the idea of the co-ad is to find those who are, are, are seeing needs and want to fill them, you know, and help try to put those pieces of the puzzle together. So uh, the co-ad was developed. And so it stands for Community Organization Active in Disaster. And the co-ad is a, uh, is a, a county uh, organization now. And if you go to uh, wilco.org, uh, you should be able to find that co-ad information. But uh, the long and short of it is, is that uh, a, a team of, of key pastors, uh, just connectors within each one of the, the communities throughout have come together to, uh, to develop a, just a plan of, of looking at what are those needs? Can we meet them as a church and, and nonprofits? And if we can't, how do we funnel those up into a, uh, a system that can help us meet the needs? And so through that process, we now have, uh, you'll see the drop-off donations on that uh, Wilco page. And we do have drop-off locations that are active now. We have Grace Bible Church. Um, they're out off of, uh, uh, I'm going to get start lying if I start trying to give all these addresses. But <laughs> right. uh, they're, they're out west, northwest. Uh, Celebration Church is a drop-off location. Uh, uh, First Baptist Church in Liberty Hill is a location for drop-off in St. Phillips and Round Rock is a, uh, a drop-off as well. And uh, we're also just added Hill Country Bible off of 620. Um, so what happens is those, those items would come in. Uh, these are items that are identified by our, our local uh, government and then also uh, leaders that are, are hearing from the people. And so that list may change through time, but these items would come in, then they'd be a support to help the church, local nonprofits and, those who are helping people help people. And that's really the big idea is that we can be able to, to help people. You know, Bible says, I love this verse and I, I say it all the time. Uh, Galatians 6, 2, bear each other's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. And so uh, we've got some leaders that, that believe in that statement. Well, looking here as we continue to talk to Derek Zwerman this morning of the Austin Disaster Relief Network. Thanks for joining us, Derek. As always, appreciate you. We had you on the show a couple of years ago when Ken and I first launched, yeah. and so it's exciting to have you back. Uh, that was during, boy, I think it was during Hurricane Harvey, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, so having you back on here to talk. Some of those items they're looking for, reading it from their website here, hand sanitizer, antibacterial soap, disinfectant wipes, latex-free gloves, new Keyword, new thermometers. Nobody wants your old thermometer. It's got to be a new thermometer. Eye protection, <laughs> goggles or glasses, face shields, protective gowns, adult and child diapers, and cleaning supplies. They said other items not listed will not be accepted at this time. You mentioned some of those locations. Grace Bible Church over off Shell Road in Georgetown. Celebration Church on Westinghouse Road. 
uh, first, uh, I believe that's first, ba- is that FBG Liberty Hill? Is that first Baptist? Yeah, first um, Baptist uh, Georgetown in Liberty Hill. Got you. Yeah, that's right. They have a location there. So first Baptist Georgetown, Liberty Hill, St. Phillips also in Round Rock. They're off Great Oaks Drive and then a few other churches. That article was last updated on March the 30th. But uh, well, awesome. Derek, what have you seen as far <laughs> as, I know that there's so many needs right now. What have you seen that has been the most dominant need from people during this entire COVID-19 pandemic? Toilet paper. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go buy you toilet know, paper, please. I saw another I saw another post from El Arroyo that said, hey, man, stores are reporting toilet paper and beans are out. We're going to be in trouble. Man. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I tell you what, <laughs> to be serious, um, one of the things that uh, we do at Austin Disaster Relief Network, our mission is to equip and empower um, a network of churches to respond to the to the physical, spiritual, and emotional needs in times of disaster. Um, out of all the disasters that I've been into, and uh, it's been several now that I look back, um, this one's different. You know, there's a lot of those uh, emotional and spiritual type needs. And so... Um, probably the greatest need that I've seen. And it's just conversation. It's relationship. It's being connected. I call it connected in crisis. I actually started a Facebook page, Rob, you ought to uh, check it out. I mean, it's, it's got just a couple of stories on it. I did this last night because I just really felt uh, in, in my heart that the biggest thing that people need right now is to be connected in crisis. And so um, if you think about that as um as as people are hurting maybe there's uh, a single adult that was already lonely and they're sitting at home right now and they're just becoming depressed they need community they need to be able to jump on a, a zoom page and feel like they're welcome you know they need to know that uh, that god loves them and that there's people that care for them and will pray for them so um what i want to point you to and this is huge this is huge this is what our team at uh, adrn austin disaster relief network has been working on if you go to uh, adrn.org you'll find that uh, on the banner there's coronavirus the next uh, page on that banner is going to talk about our prayer hotline and uh, this isn't just a couple people sitting at a uh, at a, a hotline center this is people all around our community who have been trained and they're on a cloud-based system that actually is developed so that we can point uh, those calls that come in to the hotline. The number's actually five. It's 512-537-7100. And through that hotline, if someone calls and they're, emis- they're emotionally and just spiritually, maybe physically drained, there's going to be somebody on that line that's going to be able to just hear their needs um, and, and pray with them. Uh, we're going to give them a Bible. We're also going to give them uh, one of the, uh, the books, What's After ATX. I don't know if you've seen that or not, but um, we're going to share that as well. And then um, they're going to be asked if they want to connect to a local church. And so depending on their location, we're going to find a network church that's in the area, and we're going to connect them to that church so they can start uh, connecting to the body of Christ, which is uh, – by the way, sustainability, and that's what we're after: sustainability in the body, of, in the body of our community. And uh, I believe that in this time, it's it's that spiritual and emotional need that that we need to help tackle. Well, I so encourage that. somebody. You yeah. know what I mean? Encourage somebody. Give them a good word for the day. Tell them something good. I just want to start like this hashtag around the world: like, what's good, Georgetown? <laughs> you know, what's good, ATX? What's good, whatever city you're in? Because I think everybody's hearing enough bad that they need to uh, they need to be enlightened with with some some joy. You know, what's the fruits of the spirit? <laughs> you yeah. know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self control. Let's let's press into the joy. And don't be uh, don't be hanging out behind Walgreens trucks and like bombarding them and having the police called on you, which is a story <laughs> that we heard. Come on, guy. We're talking to That's Derek right. Zorneman this morning here from Austin Disaster Relief Network. Again, that hotline, the prayer hotline, five one two. Five three seven seven one zero zero. Leo Ortiz is our co-host here. I'm going to bring him on here in just a second as well, Derek. Uh, he may have a few questions for you as we continue to talk to uh, Derek Zorneman here. I'll go ahead and flip it over. Lee, we've got you back on there as well. Are you still with us, Lee? Yeah, I'm here. You have any questions for Derek, man? Yeah, um, with the uh, the food bank, Derek. I was kind of wondering 
where is the most of the uh, the donations coming from? Is it from individuals or do you guys actually get help from uh, from grocery stains such as H-E-B or Randall's or anybody along them lines? Yeah, so I can't answer that exactly, but I know that H-E-B is one of the largest partners in Walmart. And then there's also um, some national programs. Uh, the food bank does this all the time, so they know how to get food. And uh, that is one thing that's that's really not running out right now. So um, it's just a matter of getting it to the warehouse, getting it packed up and, and having it delivered. So um, some of the things that we see right now that uh, are, are the distribution sites, just the sensitivity of social distancing and things like that. So that's more of the challenge than, than getting the food from what I understand right now. Is the, uh, through the distribution of the foods, is it possible to use uh, some of these food delivery services to help distribute some of that? Or is that even a possibility? Yeah, you know what? They're working on a lot of different programs. And like I said, um, each one of the food banks are local to the communities and they have distribution plans within that area. Also using some of the uh, school district sites to do that. So there is a, a big master plan for, for what's happening. And, and guys like, uh, you know, Commissioner Trevelyan and Mayor Wallace and, and um, you know, those guys, that's what they're looking at. It's like, man, where does, where's our greatest need? Like, where's this stuff coming from? Where's the hotspots of, of people that, that may be uh, living paycheck to paycheck and those paychecks are running out right now. You know, and how can we help them the most? And so, if they can put some food on their table, that's that's a big deal. I now, think one of the boxes, each one of the boxes that they call disaster relief box, um, feeds one person for a week. So a family of four would get four boxes. It's how that works. And and the food looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. You know, uh, after going through some of the assembly warehouses, um, it's it's a blessing for sure. And and the thing also, and you've probably seen it on the news, is that this isn't like for a poor person handout like that's not the that's not mm -hmm. what is happening right now these are people everyday people that uh, just need a little boost to the next level so um you know just I, I would like to squash that if you're thinking if you're out there and you you're struggling it's okay to reach out it's okay to ask for help and well um, absolutely i mean and i hope that people really <laughs> understand that that there are people out there that are willing to help you just got to ask I mean, if you want to, uh, even with, through faith, I mean, look at Christ. He fell down and Simon carried his cross for him. So you have to look at things with it's not shameful or anything to ask for help. Everybody falls down. Amen. They sure do. Well, we're continuing to talk to Derek Zorman this morning of Austin Disaster Relief Network. Lee Ortiz, our co-host here, of course, on HRN on Fridays. <laughs> Derek, talk a little bit more. We've talked about different organizations and things. Talk a little bit more about the Austin Disaster Relief Network, kind of the history of that organization, and, and continuing a little bit more with what you guys do and, and how people can get more information regarding that. Yeah, so um, ADRN.org is the website. Um, and Austin Disaster Relief Network is a unique organization. The director, his name is uh, Daniel Geraci. And uh, Daniel, about, I want to say, 12 years ago, um, he basically had just a vision that he feels from God, you know, and he wrote it down on a napkin talking about how to, how to break down the city in different sectors and areas and how can we help support um, the church to be able to, to uh, be prepared in times of disaster. And so <clears throat> um, as, as this thing developed, uh, a, lot of, a lot of great people, a lot of great business owners out there that uh, that believed in in this vision uh, began to help support it and uh, and so started ADRN. But uh, I actually met Daniel Geraci uh, when we had the floods here in in Round Rock, Texas. So you remember when Hurricane Hermine came through? I think it was mm -hmm. 2009 and at the end of 2009 going into 2010. And um, we had my wife and I had, had moved into this neighborhood. We've been living here for a couple of years and and uh, built a lot of relationships where we hadn't really shared our faith very much, you know, and it's, it's like, we're praying, God, what do we, what do we do? How do we reach our neighbors? And, you know, next thing I knew, we get a flood in our neighborhood and Rob, you were probably there, man, because we started house, pulling yep. together some, some people and just helping, yeah. helping people door to door, uh, clearing out furniture and, and, and uh, cutting out sheetrock and doing everything we could to, uh, to serve. And, uh, this was a Sunday night that it happened and throughout the whole week we served on, uh, during the week I'd met uh, an incredible man. His name is Tim Ryle 
And I don't know if y'all know who Tim Ryle is, but he is now uh, assistant, uh, I, I guess, deputy sheriff to uh, to Robert Chody for Williamson County. Amazing man. And uh, he at the time was the uh, the assistant uh, or uh, he was the police chief in Round Rock. And so he and I hit it off, got to talking, and uh, he decided that, hey, let's have a community serve day that we can, um, you know, engage the community, have them come in and, and serve with us. So we did that on that Saturday, and uh, he asked me to come down, and, and I left my house. And I'll tell you what, uh, about a, a mile away from the school, it seemed like I had to park because so many people came out to help. And when I got there, uh, he was waving, and he said, hey, come on up. And I went up to the front, and, and uh, hundreds of people were standing in Deepwood Elementary parking lot where my kids went to school. And, um, and I went up front and he was, he was introducing the police chief, the, uh, the other chief and the fire chief. And he had city waterworks and all kinds of people there that he was introducing from the city. And then he got to me, just this guy standing there. And, uh, he said, but I've got to tell you round rock, we could not be anywhere that we are, nor would we have the support. It wasn't, if it wasn't for the local church. And, uh, and he said, I've asked Derek Zwarneman to be here. Uh, he's from celebration church and, uh, He's going to help us lead you out into these homes to go serve. And that was really the turning point in my life when I said, wow, um, you know what, God, you're way bigger than anything that I've ever thought about. And we led those people out. And it was through that effort that uh, ADRN, Austin Disaster Relief Network, had uh, one of their first deployments where they had a tent set up with water and they had some help there. They had some prayer. And, uh, and that's when Daniel and I started building our relationship and, Never thought that 10 years later that I'd end up uh, being on his team. But uh, it's it's an incredible organization that helps churches uh, prepare. Uh, like I said, I work in church development as the manager. And then uh, Stephen Brewer is our church development director and also one of the uh, executive team members. And uh, we connect with churches. We help churches think about how do you, number one, um, identify someone that is um, – that, that has the heart for this and that you trust. So we call that person a disaster relief coordinator within each church. Uh, once they identify that person, we walk them through a couple of steps to, to begin identifying and building a core team. And that core team walks through uh, some guidelines that helps them uh, just realize why they're there. And number one is to support their pastors and their staff. That's the first C, I call it the three C's. The first C is to, to support the staff and, and the pastor of the church in times of disaster. The second one is, is to support your congregation, those people that you're already serving uh, week in and week out and doing life with. And then the third is to ultimately come and serve the community in which you live. And I believe that if every church does that, takes those three steps, that uh, our community is going to be strong and the church is going to rise up and and. Uh, and demonstrate and declare the love of Christ. Well, Derek, uh, we continue to talk to Derek as we're a minute here of the Austin Disaster Relief Network. Appreciate your time being on the show this morning. Uh, final question for me, and if you want to answer that question and then just uh, leave off with a, a few final thoughts before we let you go this morning, what's next, man? You know, what's what's on the horizon? What's next right now for everybody in Central Texas and, and organizations such as Austin Disaster Relief Network? You know, that's I don't know where I'm going with that. Just what's next? That's a loaded question, but <laughs> I think there's a lot of different ways to answer. Um, my my encouragement would be, um, even though you can't go next door and shake your neighbor's hand, be in communication with them. You know, ask your neighbor. I've got a neighbor across the street that um, I don't know how old he is. And if I say it, he, he may get mad at me, but he is. Uh, you know what? He might need some help from time to time, especially in this time. He may not be able to go to the store because he's definitely over 50 and, and, uh, and those who are at high risk. And, uh, you know, let's look out for those neighbors. Let's think about what we can do uh, personally to make a difference. Uh, that doesn't mean that we all have to go and, and, uh, and start new organizations or whatever, but if there is a great organization that's making a difference, uh, become part of it. You know, um, I know for Austin Disaster Relief Network on May 2nd, we're, we're supposed to have our, our annual gala our annual um, uh, fundraising event that raises all the money for the year. And guess what? We're not going to be able to do it live. So we're going to do it online. And Rob, I'd love for you to be a part of that and help support it because uh, what we're seeing is 
is through this time that, man, people are coming together. I think about James Davis and Key to Free. They can't do their annual uh, gala, and they've got three homes that they support and a, a small staff. And, um, you know, it's those kind of things that you can do. You know, if you're sitting around wondering, what can I do? Look around you and just think about who is supporting our neighbor, who's supporting our community that I can support? How can I serve them during this time? How can I share the message? Um, and how can I help a neighbor? You know, and uh, that, that would be my encouragement right now. Where is it going for me? I'm, I'm connecting with every church that I can connect with right now. When I first started at ADRN, I, I told uh, Stephen, our, our director, that, man, I said, there's going to be a day when I'm going to have to tell pastors, I'm going to have to schedule you with a group instead of uh, meeting individually because there's just too many calling. And uh, guess what? Right now that's happening. And so if you are a pastor and uh, you want to connect with Austin Disaster Relief Network, I'd encourage you. I'll be the one that calls you. Uh, but uh, we're setting up Zoom calls uh, in each community where we call them pastor roundtables, where we just kind of throw out some questions and, and let you guys talk and then offer any any type of equipping that we can do uh, to help you uh, to prepare for disasters. There's also a uh, page on our on our website. It's actually a special page for pastors, uh, and it's adrn.org forward slash pastor. And it's got some different ideas of what you can be doing right now. It has a list, a checklist that you can go over uh, with your executive team. Just talk about, hey, if a disaster happens, what do we do? It tells you how to build a core team and how to identify a disaster relief coordinator, and then uh, gives you our contact information so that you can reach out. But um, it, here's the deal. These times that we're in right now, they're reminding us it's bringing light to uh, to things that, you know, people have been thinking for years. And so there's also uh, a checklist there for your home on that uh, same page where you can go in. And if you go to the ADRN.org website, you can go for personal preparedness. And there's some, uh, there's some small group curriculum that you can share in your church just to help people prepare for stuff like this. What if the lights went out? What if the water went out for a while? What are you thinking? What are you doing? How can we take pressure off of Judge Gravel and our city leaders uh, when things happen instead of rushing them and saying, what are you going to do for me? Let's do it for ourselves right now in this time and let's help our neighbors do it so that uh, we can be a, a community that's uh, prepared and that we can help uh, you know, support the world around us. Well, Derek, again, appreciate your time this morning. Lee may have uh, another final question or statement, so I'll switch it back over to both of you guys. Uh, <laughs> Lee, feel free if you got another question, man. No, I just think that all the information that Derek provided this morning was great. Uh, I guess I just didn't realize that there was a network out there that uh, that reaches out to the different churches. And I'm part of Life Church, and the Pastor Brian over there is fantastic. So. Come on, Brian and Tim. Uh, yeah. Um, Tim, I met with Tim yesterday. Amazing. Yeah, and um, the youth pastor over there, Toby, is fantastic. My kids love him to death. So there's just we have a great network there at Life Church, and I'm glad to hear that there's networks like yours out there, put it, pulling everybody together in a time of need. Hey, do you know Yadi and uh, Kristen? No, I don't know them. Okay. Uh, but you know uh, them. they're your DRCs. Okay, I like, already got a team, brother. Yeah, that's awesome. One of the strongest. Yeah, that's a great church, and then I've got uh, some friends of mine that are part of the Hill Country Bible Church up here in Leander. Uh, that yeah. church has grown uh, immensely. So there's a lot, there's a group of uh, community out there everywhere. You just got to figure out where it's at. Yeah, I'm going to tell you also um, that we have some amazing churches. We have some creative churches. My daughter, uh, my 12 year old daughter, can't wait each day for our youth leaders to uh, engage through social media. You know, and they're doing live streams every day through uh, Instagram. Uh, I know if you go to celebration.church, you can see all the ways that you can connect as far as small groups, all the online services. I know City View uh, down in Round Rock, Central Baptist, um, you know, uh, Hill Country Bible, Life Leander. Um, I, I can't name them all, but there's some incredible churches that are engaging mm -hmm. every day that can can help you walk through this thing. So take care, take um, advantage of those resources and, uh, and connect somewhere. I'm just going to tell you, look, uh, if you're sitting at home right now and you're trying to figure out, Hey, what do I do? Just Google churches near me and then go to their website and see what they're doing live stream right now. This is a great time just to check them out and, and see if you're going to want to walk in those doors once they open again. 
Well, Derek, awesome. Derek, appreciate your time this morning. For more information on what you guys are doing, ADRN.org. I posted links on the Facebook live stream. But, Derek, as always, man, appreciate you. More importantly, man, appreciate your heart, your love for Christ, your love for others, man. It, it's been incredible. <laughs> and just knowing you all these years and your journey and what you've done, thank you so much. And and uh, we'll we'll continue to support you and all the efforts here in Williamson County and, and also Travis County. So thank you for all that you do, my friend. Hey, man, thank you, brother. Y'all have a great day. Awesome. Once again, that was See Derek you. Zwinterman. We appreciate him being on the show this morning. It's always uh, so much fun, Lee, to have wonderful guests on this show, and, and and especially in a time like this. You know, it's it's not a fun time, you know, but we've got folks here that are working hard to help out our local communities and taking care of people, and, and Derek is just one of those guys that has really been working hard to do that and so I was thankful to have him on we had him on in 2017 back in the day of whenever Ken and I were talking about the hurricane that came through and so it was good to hear from him this morning Lee uh, that's awesome the uh I was just thinking about that uh, the floods and everything in Houston back several years ago do you remember that yeah obviously it's one of the things that uh Whataburger was doing was providing meals to all the firefighters and I'll never forget this there was some guys down here from New York helping and they actually said, man, this is the best burger they ever had. And it was a Whataburger number one. So- <laughs> Dude, I haven't had a Whataburger number one. I haven't had any Whataburger since, uh, man, since the end of December. And I'm really missing it. And I really wish you wouldn't talk about it because it's making me want to go unhealthy and go grab one real quick. Okay, so I've been pretty eating pretty healthy myself also with the keto and everything. But I will tell you this, there are some days I just, yesterday I broke down and got me the mushroom Swiss burger, man. And it was the best burger ever. Yeah. You got to once in a while, man. So, uh, well, Lee, appreciate you being here this morning as well. Time now, eight fifty. We've got, uh, we've got about 10 more minutes. So I wanted to go over uh, a few information. I didn't get, I didn't, I've, I've been really vocal about this. We haven't had a huge response. And so I want to continue to be very vocal about this Lee and you've seen it. There are a lot of businesses in the Georgetown community that need help right now. I've talked to many of them. I've had people message me and say, Rob, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know how we're going to pay rent. I don't know how I'm going to take care of my employees. I've already had to let a few of them go in hopes that I can bring them back after all this is over. There's a lot of support, and as there should be, for folks down on the square. Uh, Rachel's doing a great job with that project. The city of Georgetown and the chamber have started to work together, and they're working on a grant program to help out businesses in our community. But there's still a lot of businesses, and not intentionally, but they're being overlooked. And I I don't say that in a negative way. I'm just saying that it's just the nature of how things go that they do, and those businesses are the ones that have reached out to us here at HRN. If you are a business owner this morning, or you know of a business owner that needs help, I've said it every program, and I'm going to continue to say it, Fill out our form at hrngeorgetown.com forward slash support. Again, it is hrngeorgetown.com forward slash support. Fill out that form. Let us know what your needs are. Coming up here in a couple of weeks, we're going to hold an auction online to help benefit those businesses that may have financial needs. Your business may not have financial needs, but you have other needs as well. Go ahead and submit that form. This isn't just about money. It's about what are your needs. We're going to make those needs public on hrngeorgetown.com. I'll get in touch with each of you here in the next week or so after you submit that form. I'll get in touch with you. We'll identify your needs, what you're okay with us making public. We're not going to put anything out there public that you don't want to be made public. We'll put that on our website, and then we're going to work to providing a platform to try to help you as well. Uh, Chris saying a good statement here, and this this is why we're doing this. If you're a home-based business, they're not the the city and the chamber. That's one area that they said that that it's not going to help, and it's not knocking them. It's just saying if you're a home-based business, it's it, that grant money will not go to you, and so that's what we're trying to focus on: are the missing holes, Lee, the missing gaps of businesses that need that help. So again, please, I encourage you go to hrngeorgetown.com forward slash support if you're a business in need. I'm making a request right now, and, and would you please consider doing this? Not for us, but through our platform to help others. If you have an an item that you would like to donate to the auction. I've had people say, look, I don't really have a physical product, but can I donate a gift card? Can I donate my services? Yes, you absolutely can. If you have an item that you would like to put in that auction to help out, 
visit hrngeorgetown.com forward slash auction. That is hrngeorgetown.com forward slash auction. We still need items. I believe that we have about $4,000 worth of items. Now, again, if people don't bid on them, we're not going to get that money. But we're hoping and praying that that happens. It's going to take place. It's an online auction in mid April. So here in a few weeks, we're working on that right now. So once again, if you're a business that needs help, hrngeorgetown.com forward slash support. If you have an item that you would donate to the auction, hrngeorgetown.com forward slash auction. Lee, I'll say this just another minute here, and then we'll get to some other chatter. But I want to let folks know that there's several options in that auction. Let's say that you're a business that needs help, but you also want to help. The way the auction is going to work is there's three ways that it can work. Number one is you donate an item and you donate 100% of the proceeds to everybody who has filled out that form at hrngeorgetown.com forward slash support. That's one way that you can help. The second way is you may say, Rob, look, I want to help out, but we also need help ourselves. That's okay. You can take 50% of the proceeds from your item and the other 50% of those proceeds will go to the pool as well. Or you may say, and there's no shame in this. You may say, Rob, look, I, I want to help out, but I just can't, but I would like, but I need help. I really want to help out right now. Maybe right now is not the right time for me to help out, but I need help. You can donate an item and you can receive 100% of the profit of that item. We've made it work for everybody. We've had some folks that have donated 50%. We've had some folks that have donated 100. I've had one person say, we need, we need 100%. That's perfectly fine. There's no shame in asking for help right now. We have the platform to provide it and the reach. We just need people to respond because we want to help you here at HRN. One final time. I think I'm going to donate one of these uh, UV lights through this uh, auction and see where that goes. Man, that would be incredible, Lee. So thank you for that. And uh, I've already had Vanessa here asking uh, that uh, she was saying, John Montgomery said, I would like to put together a big uh, wagon of liquor. And how many know? Man, I won the wagon of liquor one year at the chamber, and I loved that. It literally was a wheelbarrow of liquor. I didn't really drink all of it, though. I ended up giving it away to everybody, I think. But I won it. Uh, John Montgomery is going to help put together the big wagon of liquor. If you can donate a bottle or more bottles of liquor, we can create that. Vanessa, thank you for stepping up, saying that we can donate to the liquor wagon to help out with that. We sincerely appreciate that. Again, we're going to continue to promote this. You'll hear about it every show. But we need items, and we need businesses who have needs please respond to us. I don't want you to not be on that list when we have the auction. I was talking to a lady that, uh, another lady wondering as well. We've had two of them say, I don't know how I'm going to pay rent, Lee. These are very real situations and and they're not going to be eligible for the chamber and the city thing that's being put together because they're a home-based business also. Talking about paying rent, but they got to pay rent even out of their own home to run their business. So these are certain things that we're trying to help out, folks. Again, we're going to be very transparent with everything that we do. Those funds are going to go directly back to the people that are in need. And I just want to say thank you for your support. We all need to come together. We all need to do our part. There's a lot of businesses right now that need help. We've got to be there to help them. Because at the end of the day, as you know, the business community is what drives the economy. And there is a lot of mom and pop. Now, I'm going to say this too, Lee, and then I'm going to get off of this. It's not just Georgetown that needs help. There are communities to our north, our friends in Gerald. I always say this. I've got a huge heart for Gerald, Texas. I love the people of that community. I've always loved that community just as much as I love our dear Georgetown. There's people up in Gerald that need help. There's people in Andice that need help. There are businesses in Thrall and Thorndale and Granger and Bartlett that need help. We want to help those businesses as well. So if you could do that, would you do that for us this morning? Can you do that? That's my question to you. Lee, enjoyed having you, man. Uh, yeah, it was great. I always enjoy it on Friday mornings. Uh, looking forward to next Friday with Tori. Uh, but as far as the Gerald community, I would uh, let's reach out to Robin Barfield. She's uh, she's a newly elected uh, city council member, so she'd be a great resource to find out what we can do for Gerald. Man, that's a great idea. And if anybody else has any other ideas like that, we want you to be part of the team as well. You can always comment or just email us. It's rob at hrngeorgetown.com. It's rob at hrngeorgetown.com. Well, we've got some guests that are starting to line up next week. We'll have Tori Clark from Spa Lux, one of our sponsors who has renewed her advertising through this. And that's another thing is we have the platform to continue to promote your business through this COVID-19 pandemic. We want to be able to help continue that. Tori's going to be on the show. She's got a lot of gift cards that she's trying to sell to really help keep her business going right now because, of course, they can't be open. 
And so if you can help out Tori at Spa Lux, that's S P A L U X E dot com. Lee, before I let you go, man, we do this every day. Today is the National Day of Something. All right, Lee. Today, the National Chocolate Moose Day. Is that did I say that right? Chocolate Moose? Moose? Yeah. Yeah. Smooth, creamy chocolate with a caramel filling. Oh yeah. What is a tweed, by the way? What is a tweed? Is tweed? Yeah, I thought it said National Weed Day. I was like, that's going real good in Colorado, <laughs> man, but it's National National Tweed Day. That's I have no idea. It celebrates fabric. Originally produced uh. in Scotland. It's originally produced in Scotland. The durable textile was initially hand woven. So that is what tweeds are. Huh. Mm. So, National Day of Tweed. You wonder how they came back with it. Wear a tweed hat, a vest, or a suit while wearing your tweed. Learn more about William Boss Tweed. I guess that's where it came from. William Boss Tweed. Born April the 3rd, 1823. He was the wealthiest and most powerful politician of his time. He was part of Tammany Hall in New York. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was, yeah, was he one died of the most in jail. corrupt politicians. Yeah, died in jail. I don't know if I'd like to celebrate Tweed Day. No, but I mean, he definitely laid the foundation to what we see in politicians today. He's <laughs> done a great job. Yeah. Hey, today, too, National Find a Rainbow Day today. Oh, that shouldn't be too hard. We got plenty of rain. All we just need is the sun to come out, just a hair, and it'll. We'll see a rainbow. So it's it's National Find a Rainbow Day today. Do you have a rainbow in your neck of the woods? There are people that see rainbows as an artistic masterpiece in the sky. Others that see it as a sign of hope and many a sign of promise. It could be all three, beauty, hope, and promise. That by Jill Magnus. How do you observe it? We'll go find a rainbow. Of course, you can observe it. if you Look, if you don't have a rainbow today, if you can't find one, just go look up the Wizard of Oz. Okay? <laughs> there and, you go. And, and when Judy Garland sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow, you'll find a rainbow, right, Lee? Yep. Got one. We got a couple more here. Today is National Film Score Day. National Film Score Day. Film score? Like one of the best films ever? Uh, just a film. National Film Score Day. The Godfather, by far one of the best movies. Not just a movie, but also musical score as well. Yeah, and that's what, it, that's what this day is honoring, is the musical scores. Of course, Star uh, Wars is one of the most well-known. Harry Potter, you know the Lord of the Ring films, that that got some accolades. Conan the Barbarian, if you actually listen to the whole music score to that, it is actually really, really good. Yeah, so it's National Film Score Day. Hey, Chris, over to A1 Smartphone, one of our one of our wonderful sponsors here, he said the double rainbow video. And you notice how I said that? I stuttered. I said the double rainbow because it's double. I didn't mean to. I just came out that way. The double rainbow video. You can video. go watch that this morning. The duh, double. That's two right there. Double rainbow video. Here's the final one, Lee, that we all need to celebrate today. And we're going to do it tonight, by the way, on HRN from 7 to 9. It's the virtual dance party. Are you ready for it? That virtual dance party is being sponsored by Joshua Harris over at Oak Ridge Disciple House. Appreciate Oak Ridge. Kay Briggs at Pink Poppy. Thank you, Kay. And also Tammy Katowski at Stone Deck. So we're going to have fun tonight from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Clear out your living room. We're going to do it again, this time from 7 to 9. Listen in tonight. you got to download the Hip Radio Network app. We're going to have the HRN Friday Virtual Dance Party. Again, made possible by Oak Ridge Disciple House, Stone Deck, and Pink Poppy. you got to be there for that. That's going to be a lot of fun, Lee. So if you don't mind, if you could go find a disco suit and then send us a picture tonight, Lee, I think that'd be great, man. It ain't happening. <laughs> so I got camouflage. Join us, join us, join us for that tonight, man. Well, Lee, been a fun day. I appreciate you, man. Can't wait to have you back on on Friday. Any final thoughts, brother, before we let you go, man? Uh, faith, family, and friend, brother. Uh, just remember, uh, take care of those that need taken care of, and please uh, be kind to people. Couldn't have said it better, Lee. For more information about Lee and how you can help his business, it's climatecontrolprostx.com. Again, climatecontrolprostx.com. Lee, what's that tagline, brother? When you need an AC pro, <laughs> call your bro at Climate Control Pros. There it is, man. Well, Lee, appreciate you, man, and all that you do for our community and, and just serving people through your business and, and helping out people, not just through your business, but throughout your life, man. We appreciate you, brother, and looking forward to having you back on Friday, man. 
All right, brother. I'll talk to you later. Be safe today. You got it. Once again, that once again, Lee Ortiz, a climate control pros, joining us here on Good Morning Georgetown. He is our Friday co-host, so you'll be able to see Lee here every single Friday. And then, of course, again, we're going to have Tori Clark as a guest next Friday. So make sure that you join us. Hey, if you haven't already, friends. Download the Hip Radio Network app. It's super simple on your iPhone or your Android. I know that you're a lot of you are watching on Facebook right now, but this station goes much more than just this Facebook Live show. We have a radio station here. It's Georgetown's hometown station. It's an internet-based station. Runs digitally, twenty-four-seven, three sixty-five. We're keeping you up to date with the latest news, events, weather, everything that's going on, especially during this COVID nineteen pandemic. We want to keep you up to date and help keep you and your family safe. Download that app. It's Hip Radio Network. Join us, and then be sure again to join us tonight from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. for the HRN Virtual Dance Party, made possible in part by Stone Deck, as well as Oak Ridge Disciple House and Pink Poppy. Friends, as I end every single broadcast, reminding you this Friday morning that we're not strong enough alone to make it on our own. We need each other. Provide a word of encouragement. Lend a hand of support. Somebody out there today needs you. Good morning, Georgetown, and God bless. We'll be back on Monday. Have a great rest of your day and a wonderful weekend. We'll see you tonight from 7 to 9 on that HRN virtual dance party. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for being a part of the show. USA Radio News with Chris Barnes. The White House is expected to recommend people in COVID-19 hotspots wear masks. As President Trump said yesterday, regulations concerning masks will be coming soon. The Coronavirus Task Force is warning, though, that masks won't be keeping people necessarily from getting the illness, but rather from transmitting the virus to other people. COVID-19 has now killed nearly 6,000 people across the nation. More than 245,000 confirmed cases are in the U.S. as of last night. The Labor Department reporting more than 6.6 million workers filed first-time claims for jobless benefits last week. That's more than double the 3.3 million that filed the week before. And you're listening to USA Radio News. I'm doing it all, the water, the fiber, the exercise, but I still have constipation with belly pain, straining, and bloating that keeps coming back. My doctor said I may have a chronic medical condition called irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. Linzess, linaclotide, is a prescription medication that treats adults with IBS with constipation. Linzess helps relieve belly pain and lets you have more frequent and complete bowel movements. Individual results may vary. Do not give to children less than 6, and it should not be given to children 6 to less than 18. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Talk to your doctor and learn more at Linzess.com. That's L-I-N-Z-E-S-S.com. Or call 1-800-LINZESS. More on the coronavirus from a global perspective. Experts say it's now killed over 53,000 people around the world, and there are more than a million confirmed infections currently. Weather forecasters are predicting an above-normal hurricane season this year as Colorado State University released its annual Atlantic hurricane season forecast late yesterday, and it predicts 16 named tropical storms instead of the average of 12. And the researchers there say eight of those are going to be reaching hurricane status. The Awakened Church in Jonesboro, Arkansas, says it will defy federal and state guidelines and it will be holding services this weekend despite the pandemic. That state does not require places of worship to follow the guidelines urging no gatherings larger than 10 people. And this is USA Radio News. Here's your Georgetown forecast from the HIP Radio Network Weather Center. Daytime highs approaching 74 today. Under cloudy skies with scattered thunderstorms likely. South winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. 
Chance for scattered thunderstorms again. Tonight, lows level off around 48. Overcast skies. Scattered thunderstorms likely. Tomorrow, high temperatures reach up to 57. Cloudy skies expected. That's a look at your forecast. I'm meteorologist Paul Frobley. Currently, it's 66 degrees. Thanks for staying with us this morning, friends. We'll send it back over to regular programming. We'll start things with a shout-out to one of our sponsors, the Power of Four team, and then it is God Only Knows for King and Country. Make sure you've got the Hip Radio Network app. Otherwise, have a great day. We will see you tonight. Have a wonderful time, friends. Appreciate you joining us today. Broadcasting worldwide from the Ashby Real Estate Broadcast Studio, this is Hip Radio Network, Georgetown, your hometown station.